So let's check on those winds here if uh, my graphic doesn't want to go. Here we go. Here's a look at the velocity scan right now. Um, radar estimated winds aren't uh, a heck of a lot strong right now, but we'll pull them up here. There we go. Uh, 39, uh, 36 miles per hour in Corpus Christi is the sustained winds and 46 miles per hour. So definitely strong right there. That is tropical uh, storm force winds, although uh, my graphic is not updating that. The tropical storm force begins at 39 miles per hour, goes up to 73, at which point becomes a category one hurricane. But we aren't seeing the blue here on my wind speed map, but it should be up here on my wind gust map 63 mile per hour gust out at the naval air station so very breezy conditions here in corpus christi and i'm going to toss it over to carly these uh winds are going to make for some very big waves so here's carly with more on those waves and the beach conditions yeah the stronger the winds are the bigger the waves are going to be that's essentially what creates a swell but we're so close to the coast now we're just getting that really choppy action coming into the area uh so so we're seeing 8 to 12 foot waves. In fact, the latest reading at our buoy is now up to 15 foot. That's the closest buoy to Corpus Christi. And along the coast, we're seeing 8 to 12 foot waves easily. Uh, they may be crashing further off the coast. If you were to stand at the coast and look at the waves, you probably would not think they are that high. But I will say once that wave gets to the point where the, the lower half of the wave is interacting with our sandbars, it's going to crash and it could be as high as 8 to 12 feet well offshore. So that's what we were looking at with our waves. As you can see, this is the path it took earlier this morning as our waves really started to pick up. That was around 8 a.m. And then by 11 a.m. Uh, we are going now, we are going to continue to see those high waves through at least 4 p.m. before things start to calm down as the storm moves further inland and gets away from our coastline. Something else we're watching for really closely now that we are dealing with some of the outer bands of the system moving into the coastal bend is going to be the potential for those weak tropical tornadoes that do tend to form in the outer bands. So we're keeping a really close eye on our northern counties. So when we're looking at velocity, some of those areas are going to be near south of George West and near Mathis as well as approaching San Diego you're going to see some stronger winds within the storms that are moving through that area. So that's what we're looking at on reflectivity. Uh, you can see the heavier rainfall there near George West and Mathis. Uh, essentially, uh, no tornado warnings at this time. But with that being said, these tropical tornadoes can easily spin up at any time because it's it's speed shear that's essentially developing them. And it's a lot different than how a, uh, a supercell tornado were to develop. So faster winds up at the surface or uh, high in the atmosphere within that tropical storm, slower winds down at the surface as the tropical storms moving inland is really what does create that kind of scenario. Again, we're not seeing any tornado warnings at this time, but it's something that we are watching really closely throughout the morning as the system is continuing to move inland and we're really interacting with those outer bands and those outer bands are interacting with uh, the dry air and, and the calmer wind speeds, especially on the northern side of the system where we're not seeing that much rainfall. Mike. All right, good information, Carly. Thank you for that. And thank you to Kristen also for uh, continuing to keep us updated.